when she was in the hospital with the Paul Newman, I, I wanted puberty to come sooner for me. I, oh my! Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I had a crush on her. There she is. I mean, you know, and here she is. She's still beautiful, and 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 yet you had all these diverse roles. You made up in the disguise for Twin Peaks. Did cameos on television. Three-time Oscar nominee. You've done it all. Golden Globe winner. And uh, and you scared me to death in Carrie when you were wielding that. Did you know people would be scared by that scene? I had no idea. No idea. You just did the scene and figured that was it. Well, you know, I th took the part originally because I thought it was a comedy. <laughs> well, it was and, kind of funny in some and ways. And only in rehearsals did I find out from Brian De Palma that he meant it to be serious. I had worked out some comedy bits to do, and he stopped me up to the second time I did it. <laughs> one of these funny things. So you were going to do funny takes? Yeah, he said, oh, Piper, you can't do that. You're going to get a laugh. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> but it was frightening, i got to tell you. It was frightening, mm -hmm. the way they cut it and, and you know. But I'm, I'm over it now. So I'm like, do you remember the first time you ever acted as a child or the first was it in a school play or what? Um, I don't re remember. Uh, I was told I... I went up on stage at the Fox Theater in Detroit, Michigan, when I was about two or three. Oh, wow. Because they were giving away peanuts. <laughs> and I, that sounded like you could take as many as you could carry. And so I went up there and lifted my skirt, and the audience howled. And my sister was mortified and talked about it forever, because my underpants were showing, and everybody was laughing. But that was my first stage experience. Well, I'm just disappointed in you that as an actress, you would lift your skirt and work for peanuts. That's just terrible. It's horrible. No comment. No comment. Uh, you did some work in live television. I'm a big fan of, of live television back, you know, in the day. And don't you wish there was sort of a resurgence of that as a way for actors and actresses to ply their trade? And Yes, but they don't really know how to do it anymore. No, they don't. And I don't think the writers are willing to sit down on spec uh, and really create wonderful dramas. And the other thing is, uh, somebody did try to do it, and they chose a subject that required um, a big screen. Sure. And it, I don't think it worked because of that. A couple of attempts, yeah. George yeah. Clooney did the Fail Safe yeah. movie, and then, of course, they tried to do the Sound of Music thing live, uh, and, and some work and some don't. And I mentioned The Hustler in 1961. Oh, what rave reviews you got. And I'm thinking, oh, she's going to go on and do lots of other films. And you just said to Hollywood, I'm out of here for 15 years. For 15 years until you came back and did Carrie. Why did you wait 15 years? Yeah. Um, the work wasn't that interesting that was being offered, and the world was changing. The Vietnam War had started, the civil rights movement, and it just seemed uh, uninteresting, demeaning to spend a lot of energy at something that wasn't respecting. So, You're talking about doing acting in movies that maybe didn't have a lot of substance to them. And right, just... or imitations of parts I'd already played. Why did you, this book is called Learning to Live Out Loud, Piper Laura, and I want everybody who sees this on, on our show and if it's posted on YouTube or whatever, I hope you'll buy a copy of this. It's a great book. It's a quick read. You can't put it down. Why did you write it? A lot of stories, in, even among my family, they, they get things all mixed up about what happened and when, and, um, and I just wanted to get it all straight. Also, I kept a lot of secrets, and I thought they were really interesting secrets. Yeah, interesting is not the word for it. I'm going to tell you folks at home, if when you read this through, and I'm not giving it away because I think it's probably been told in the media, but you mentioned that here you were 18 or 19 years old, and your first love was Ronald Reagan, and you folks had a relationship. Um, you said in the book he seduced you. So my question is, why didn't you end up as first lady? Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I wanted to be a, a, a successful actress. And the, and it, the, my interest, you know, and, and also I, I was, uh, he wasn't the man for me. He was a, a, it was a wonderful first love. Right. And um, 
but he wasn't a man for me to be with the rest of my life. Right. Uh, and he was too old. Well, he was 20 years older. Yes. And he was uh, you were like 18 or 19, he was 39 or 40. I was, yeah, I was 18, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just... Yeah, I mean, he was very attractive. Sure. I mean, yeah. And kind of, an, he wasn't a great actor, but he was a little underrated. I mean, he could perform. He yes, could yes. Um, I thought you did a great job in the few westerns that you did. Now, I know maybe they weren't your favorites. Uh, some of the, the roles were better than others. I was watching one the other day with Tyrone Power, and you were just great in that. Um, I guess since we're here at a western film fair, I have to ask the, the obligatory question, why didn't you just want to do more westerns? Well, I was under contract to Universal, and I did whatever they told me to do. Right. That was. You came along with Tony Curtis, Rock Hudson, James Best, that whole. Group. Right, right. And they pretty much pointed you where you were going to do. Yes, yes. And I was luckier than most because they put me to work right away, and they kept me working. Yeah. And when I wasn't making a movie, and I made three or four a year, they sent me on the road to sell. The ones I done. Sure. Um, of course, people who were fans of Twin Peaks remember that magnificent disguise that, that you wore in there, and that was just a landmark uh, performance. You did another one of my favorite shows. I have a lot of good friends who worked on St. Elsewhere, and you did a cameo on that. Um, but you, you, you sort of picked and choose the, chose the, uh, the, 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 the cameos, the guest starring roles that you wanted to do. So here's my question. Is it difficult? as an actress to come into an ensemble, to come into a show that's already established and do what you need to do for that role when you're only a guest star, when you're only there for one time? It depends on the role, on the part. Sometimes parts are written very specifically for an outsider, and, and it works in that case. And the fact that you have no relationship with the actors is, is okay. And oftentimes you don't get to see the other shows they've done, right? Usually when I would take a job, I made it my business to see so, as much as I could of the, of the work they'd done To before. get up to speed. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. No, I, it's some great roles. Final question I want to ask you. People always wonder, big stars like yourself, um, what kind of television shows and movies do you like to watch now when you just want to have free time and pick and choose what you want to watch. What do you I like to watch? I have a really eclectic taste. I, I, I watch Turner Classic movies a lot. That's great. Um, I saw a movie, sometimes you don't get the names of them because they've already started. Right. But there's some e extraordinary things on that people don't know about. Anything new? Any new TV shows, new films that you like? I haven't had a chance to watch anything of the new of the new shows. Right. Well, a lot of people say they don't make the shows like they used to, but there's I think maybe there's a resurgence of some good dramas and, mm -hmm. and action adventures. And uh, you've had a great career. I just appreciate you spending time with us, and uh, I know you've got a lot of things to do here at the festival. When you get back home, what will you be doing? Uh, uh, what kind of hobbies and things will you be doing? Well, I I. Um I recently did a musical, my first stage musical. Really? Yeah, I did uh, Madame Armfeld in the Sound of Mu in the Little Night Music. How about that? In Santa Barbara at the opening of a brand new theater there. That's great. Yeah, it was musical. Yeah, I just had a great time. Well, I'm just glad you didn't do anything musical with Carrie because I don't think I could have stood you singing with that knife in your hand. Well, you know they've done it a few I know. times. <laughs> you did. You scared me to death. I'm just going to tell you. So, well, you look all right. You, I'm okay now, but see, I'm actually covered. well. I'm only 20 years old. <laughs> And, but I look, oh. <laughs> I, I look 60 because it scared me so bad. Piper Laurie, the wonderful award-winning Piper Laurie, and we thank her for spending time. Please get her book. You'll love it. Hello, guys. I will come here to my channel. It's been a long time since I've ever made a video. I've been sick. So I came here to announce to you that Piper Laurie, a renowned actress known for her roles in The Hustler and Carrie, passed away in Los Angeles, California on Saturday at the age of 91. She was married to Joy Morgenstern, an American writer and retired film critic from 1961 until their divorce in 1982. 
The couple adopted a daughter named Anne Grace Morgenstern in 1971. Her representative confirmed her death, though a cause of death has not been revealed at this time. Reports are suggesting that she had been unwell for some time and she may have died from natural causes. During her career, Lowry received a nomination for the British Academy Film Awards for her role in The Hustler and four Golden Globe nominations, including a win for Carrie. Piper is survived by her daughter Anne Grace, and our thoughts and prayers are with her friends, family, and everyone who knew her at this difficult time.